This encounter takes place in Kansas in 2002. At first, I didn't mind the job. It was 2002, and it was pretty good money for this part of Kansas. Also, it was close to my hometown, which made the drive easier. It was only a 20-minute drive out to the restaurant where I worked on the outskirts of town in sort of an industrial area. The area was surrounded by trees, which did make it kind of dark and creepy. The clientele ranged from truckers who stopped in for coffee on their way through town to loggers who were just getting off work. The bar looked like most others in this part of Kansas, pretty run down and sort of seedy. It seemed that the only thing the place had going for it was the fact that it stayed open late. They were open from dinner time until two in the morning most nights, and 24 hours a day until late Saturday night, or basically 2 a.m. on Sunday. I'd been there a few hours at this point when this happened, and it was pretty slow. So that day I had been spending most of my time reading behind the bar, reading a copy of The Purpose Driven Life that I had gotten from one of the customers the night before. Most patrons were regulars, local men who drank there just about every night of the week, so I knew them all. After about an hour, it still wasn't very busy, so I decided to go back into the kitchen and wash up some glasses and plates that I had been avoiding in the sink. And when I came back out into the bar area a few minutes later, one of my regulars was sitting in his usual bar stool. He was a lumberjack type of guy, tall and burly, but as nice as can be, or as my grandma always said, as red as the mud on my boots, which I never really knew what that meant. But anyway, his name was Charles, and he had a big bushy mustache and long hair and always wore jeans and flannel shirts. Well, I got behind the bar, and instantly I could see that he looked like something was bothering him. He was looking around the bar kind of frantically and saying, did you see it? I asked him if he was okay, and when he didn't respond right away and just kept looking around frantically, I got a little freaked out. It's like he was having an episode or something, like his brain was sort of not fully there. And that's when I looked to my right and saw the back door of the place wide open. I knew it wasn't open when I was just back there doing the dishes, and I hadn't seen anyone else go back there, so this gave me actual goosebumps. And Charles was now fixated on the back room and staring back there without blinking, so I moved over a bit and started to look back there myself, and that's when I saw a huge, brownish, orangish, dog-like creature just standing there in the doorway. It just stood there staring at me and Charles and me looking at it and Charles looking at it, and our eyes had locked. Our bodies were still as we both checked each other out. The staring contest lasted for what seemed like forever until finally it looked over at Charles again. Breaking my gaze with it caused the creature to growl and hiss at us both and then it turned around and ran out the back door and off into the woods. This creature was huge, maybe seven or eight feet tall and it looked like a dog standing there on two legs. The dogman's face looked more like an ape than a dog, with kind of yellowish eyes and human-like teeth. I mean, it was unlike anything I had ever seen before. And at first glance, I thought it looked like a dog, but as I stared at it in disbelief, my eyes clearly could see that this dog was really something different. What stood in front of me was more like a dog or an ape hybrid or something. I was so terrified when I was standing there that I couldn't move. And then after what seemed like forever, Charles, who had been also staring in disbelief at the dog man, finally snapped out of it. He stood up from his bar stool and pulled a gun out of his jacket pocket and headed to the back door. And that's when I did something I will never be able to explain. When Charles walked out the back door, I grabbed a flashlight and followed him. Something inside me told me to follow him, to go out there, and to see what was happening. I mean, there isn't even a word in the English language to describe how terrified I was as we walked out that door and towards the woods, and yet I still went. Looking back, I have no idea what possessed me to do it. 
As we looked around the outside of the back door, we saw what appeared to be dog paw tracks pacing back and forth just outside the door, as if it had been inspecting us, just watching us for a while before opening the door and coming inside. Charles suddenly seemed to calm down and started to talk about how dogmen have been sighted in these woods for years and that sightings go all the way back to the 1800s. His family has been here in the area for generations, so I totally believe him. We walked towards the woods and not before long we could hear something or someone moving through the woods. We stopped and looked at each other. To me, it sounded like an animal making contact with leaves and sticks, like walking through the brush, but moving quickly. We followed the sounds and they took us down into this sort of dip in the land where rainwater catches and makes a small ditch. Charles suddenly put his finger up to his mouth and shushed me, pointing down. I followed his finger and there, standing about a hundred feet from us, was the dog man. He was just standing down from us, looking around slowly with its head tilted kind of sideways. Standing there and looking at this creature was the most terrifying experience of my life, hands down. It looked like a dog standing on its hind legs, but at the same time it wasn't a dog at all. I don't know how else to explain it except that it was a dog, but not a dog. Yet still a dog that almost looked like a human. I think the human part mainly came from the shape of its arms and legs and torso, but then also from its eyes that seemed to be able to talk to me without its mouth even moving or saying anything. Honestly, like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. And then the dog man just turned and looked at us and then it moved. It darted towards us and then turned in an instant and ran off into the woods howling like a wolf as it ran. Charles and I stood there forever, it seemed, just looking at the dogman's tracks in the ground leading off to where it had gone. Charles turned, looked at me, and said, we should probably go back. He was smart to not want to follow it into the woods and into its territory, and so we returned to the restaurant. You were right not to follow it, I said as I started to dial 911, but then stopped before the call connected. What if they don't believe me? I wondered out loud. What if they think this dogman is fake and not real life like you and I think? So I never did call the police, but I never forgot or got over that creature either. I never told anyone about what happened that night until now with my writing this to you. And to be honest, when I look back on it, I really don't know what we saw that night. Like, what exactly it was. Charles and I kept in touch for a while, but when I stopped working at the restaurant, our contact dropped off. I don't know how he's doing, but I sometimes think about trying to find him and see how he is. What I do know is that it was real and its image will never leave me. It's literally in my head behind my eyes as I write these words to you. I can see it all the time. Honestly, I can just close my eyes and see it exactly like it was that night. And sometimes, when the lights are out at night, I swear I can feel someone watching me from the foot of my bed. Have any of you had these similar experiences? This encounter takes place outside of Pontiac, Michigan in 2013. It was early October in 2013, and I was just starting a new job for the season. The moon was full, so it wasn't hard to find my way to meet the rest of the crew at my new job. I had just started working with the maintenance crew at a haunted house, and I didn't know many guys yet. Luckily, Tom, our lead guy, made us feel welcome when we arrived that night. He told us he had plans to build something extra special at the haunted house that year and we were going to help him. He needed us to work at night so that we could test the new project in the dark, just how the people coming through would see it. And anyway, Tom walked us through the first part of his secret project. He started by showing us an old dog kennel that he had found in the storage locker that the haunted house used on the off-season. 
The dog kennel was huge and heavy, made of metal, and it had been sitting unused for years, so some parts were rusted, but it was still sturdy. He asked us to take the kennel apart and clean all the pieces. It was huge, so we had to move it outside in order to work on it, and it took four of us to pick it up and move it. We worked late into the night, taking off each piece, cleaning it with a wire brush, and repainting the metal parts with rust-proof paint. Meanwhile, there were a lot of tufts of fur stuck to it. We had to pull them out, and that was creepy. And while working on it, I wondered why someone would need such a heavy metal kennel for just a dog. I have to admit that it was a bit spooky working in such a creepy place, and I think it was making me come up with crazy thoughts. I honestly was even freaking myself out, thinking that I was hearing things off in the distance, like dogs barking. And then, that's when I saw it, sitting off in the distance, on the side of a hill. It was what looked like a dog. It was dog-shaped, but looked big from where I sat. Also, I could just make out its shape barely in the moonlight, and it was staring at us and watching us clean the heavy metal crate. For a while, I just kept working, thinking that I was seeing things in the dark, but eventually I watched the thing stand up and take a step towards us. Truth is that now I thought it was someone else just practicing wearing their outfit for the haunted house or being a jerk to try to scare us. Or maybe it was some kind of an initiation for the job, and they were watching for our reactions. But that didn't really make sense either. Anyway, I called everyone over and convinced them to walk with me down into the field where it was sitting, and I did get two of the guys to agree to walk along. They were also convinced that it was just a dog, but it wasn't until we got closer that we saw that it wasn't a dog at all, but some kind of a weird dog-man creature with long arms and legs, and it was standing there on two legs by the time we got over to it. It had a dog's head, but dogs don't walk on two feet, so that didn't make any sense. The only part of the dog that seemed normal was its fur, which looked like regular dog fur. Well, the dog man was standing there in the grass staring down at us, and we all gasped when we got closer. I could tell that the two friends wanted to run, but I convinced them to stay with me. We walked closer and watched the dog man as it watched us. And to be honest, I was actually feeling scared myself, but didn't want to show it to them. And then that dog man did something really weird. It started waving its arms in the air in a way like it wanted us to follow it. I was sure that I was dreaming or maybe in shock or something, but my two friends completely changed their minds and decided to follow the thing off into the dark. They looked at me to come with them, but I just stood there frozen as I watched the dog man turn around and take a few steps and then look back at us, blinking its eyes. It wanted us to follow it. That's all I could figure. I was the one still standing there since my two friends had already started to walk towards it and I didn't know what to do. I mean, could this dog man thing even be real? Sure, I was standing there looking at it, but I wasn't trusting my brain at that moment. Either way, I decided it wasn't worth it even though I had initiated this whole encounter, so I just turned around and walked back up towards the dog crate we had been working on, figuring if those two guys wanted to go off with that thing, they could do that on their own. So I stood there and watched the dog man as it continued to walk towards the trees, walking back towards the way it had come from. And I kept watching for my friends to show up off in the distance behind the creature, but I never did see them. And then, as I kept looking for them, at that moment they came running up to me. They said that the dog man had stared at them while making a low, hissing, growling noise and then turned and walked away into the darkness, so they just fled. They were so scared that they didn't know what to do or to say. Truth is that I could tell that they were scared because they were basically just silent, standing there shaking their heads in disbelief. And then they asked me if dogmen were real, and I told them I had no idea. 
I was thinking that the dogman was something made up for the haunted house when I saw it sitting out there. And then Tom came over to us to see how the dog crate cleanup was coming along and we told him what just happened and his mouth fell open. He said he might as well let us know what was going on with the rest of his secret project. He started talking about his plan, which none of us could wrap our heads around. He told us that he had previously heard about these dog creatures being in the area before and that a past manager had even told him about seeing one in past years. We were all shocked when we found out that the dog crate was only the beginning. And Tom said that he was hoping to lure the dog man thing into that crate one night, hoping to make it part of the haunted house. He said dog men were mostly nocturnal creatures and he had been hoping that they would be attracted by the dog crate smell. And he also planned to put rabbit carcasses in there to lure them in in hopes of them tripping the door closed behind them. We all stood there in total disbelief, not knowing what to say or to do next. Tom told us that we had a decision to make. Did we want to help him or not? Truth was that I was already having a hard time breathing and was feeling super lightheaded. I just nodded my head yes, even though in my head I really was thinking no. I stuck it out for the rest of that night so no one would know how scared I was, but I'll tell you that I never did go back to that job the next day. I'm not even sure what the other workers chose to do, if they stayed on the job or if they left. I can tell you that I didn't hear anything about a dog creature at the haunted house that year in the news or around town, so I'm guessing they never did catch the dog man. Anyway, I'm not surprised, because I've been reading up on them, and dogmen are supposed to be very hard to capture. And they're supposed to be extremely intelligent, so Tom would have needed a lot of luck for his dog crate plan to work. I just can't believe that he thought that capturing the dogman would be a good idea. I never did hear from or see any of those guys again. I sure hope... Nothing bad happened to them.